Kraken is also it's a very direct action to stop something uh, in yeah to stop a problem with uh, with housing. So for many people it was very unlogical that there is many houses uh, empty and on the same time that there is many people without a house. Um, it was me meant to uh, to stop speculation with housing and uh, it started about uh, 1970. It was a kind of protest, direct action, um, but it developed more and more. As you can see now, we are on a boat on the Amsterdam Channel. Normally this, this boat is in a harbor outside Amsterdam, which we squatted four and a half years ago. It's called ADM. Now we are threatened with an eviction. And I'm on my way to court with this boat. We don't want to leave there because for some silly reason, they want to make a whole lot of money by selling this place, this old ship wharf, to uh, the government of this city. We're not planning to leave. And if they still want us to leave, we have other methods than fighting in court. Until now we had uh, three courts from the 1st in January, the 2nd in February and this one. And the game is still not over. That's the only thing we can say, you know. I, I don't know what they're gonna uh, judge, but it will be in a month, the, the sentence. But uh, yeah, the worst is uh, you have to leave in two months. Uh, the best is uh, there are no uh, licenses for the new hire and uh, we have to wait for that and after that uh, if he has his license to start there um, you get another three months or something. During the six seas some squatters after they were evicted they started a uh, court session because they said it was illegal that they were kicked out. So then you get some uh, sentences of court, of the court, high court, that uh, when a house is empty, that uh, is legal to squat. And that's still the main rule in Holland. <laughs> We squatted this place, the North Wall, we squatted in two years ago. We came with 30 people. There is a forest near here. Almost 28 of the people stayed there. And then uh, Martijn and me, we went in the day, just in a normal day, in 12 or something. We went uh, via the back. We break in with one... Uh, where is this fucking thing? <laughs> One thing like this. We opened the door, or we broke the door and we went in, we opened the front door, and we called the other people. And they come immediately, and uh, then it was squatted. 
Yeah, the police came after half an hour just when I finished with put a lock, a new lock in the front door. <laughs> so I closed immediately, but it was not finished yet. But they didn't want nothing. They just uh, said, okay, it's quartered. Yeah, it's quartered. Okay. Yeah, for me, it's a big reason that uh, it was empty. Empty houses should be uh, used, well, I find this. And that's why uh, I like to squat. I like to live in a squat. It's also because you can do a lot of things with these uh, buildings. I prefer to live uh, with a lot of people um, because when I live on my own, I work all day at home because I paint. And sometimes I get like, wow, I want to, to see people. And here are friends. They're around me. I can drink tea with them or I cook with them if I want. If I don't want, I have my own room and I can do my own things. That's what I like about the community. We have meetings once in a while, whenever matters come up that we have to solve something. Like uh, last winter, the water line froze and, and uh, it burst. It's all lead pipes and we had to fix it. You know, of course, you need water. And so we get together to talk about, okay, what we're going to do. We have uh, money that every month we put in a pot, a central pot. And from that we pay water bill, electricity, whatever. And then also we have money to pay, in this case, to fix the water line. And then we all help uh, uh, fixing it. So it's just uh, cooperation, mostly. We just have had to inform ourselves in the government how long this house was empty to know if we had the right to squat it. And then we came inside and we had everything. With, uh, there was electricity, there was water, and uh, the building was in perfect condition. And then we just came inside and we cleaned it up and uh, we just put a nice things inside for us to start to live here. Well, I think for us, uh, the, the to live and to work in the squad uh, is, is, is a gold uh, mine. A gold mine means that uh, not in money, but much more that we have here the opportunity to, to, to explore the theater side, the movement theater. We have a space. Each day we can go in, we can work there our pieces out to create. And secondly, the way of living in a squad attracts me especially because uh, I like to, to share the same building with people that are more or less in the same uh, way of living, it's a style of living. It's more than only uh, just living in a squad, it's also a philosophy that people are coming here to be together, to split something. My philosophy of living in a squad is, uh, I find if I would rent one, one house, just renting one house and uh, live there, it, the, 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 the contact with my neighbors will be different. So that means, that doesn't mean that, 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 uh, that here, because you don't pay on the moment rent, that, you, that this makes the contact different. But it's much more that the people that live in this house are here because they choose for it. It's a kind of living style. And this philosophy is like, uh, for example, for me personally, that uh, I can borrow something from a friend of mine in this house. I can borrow something and he can borrow something to me without any problem. Uh, we have social contacts much more than I think that people have when they live just on their own. Well, I think uh, uh, squatters, that the squatters what, who are not legalized, I think um, it's about um, 5,000 at least. But you can say uh, most of them live for more than five or ten years or so um, uh, on under not um, uh, legal conditions. And in practice, you can say, well, uh, in, in effect, uh, they are living legal now. Well, when
when I first came in here, I felt a very good energy, and I wanted to stay here. So I started to build, and when I finished it, the, the next day, someone passed by and said, oh, that's a crack, and you have to pay rent, I'm going to do something against you, and, and then I started to, shit, you know, I worked <coughs> two months on it, and then someone just passed by and terrorized me, and we have everything. Well, we built it, everything. When we first arrived here, it was a bit messy. The walls were a bit falling. Then we rebuilt it all. We have kitchen, we have toilet, we have a bath, we have a shower, we have just normal life. So the, when the house was squatted in 1978, so that's 13 years ago, there came six people and they found an empty house. And what they found was nothing. It was all wood, and there wasn't even a tap. There was no electricity, and uh, they rearranged. They started to rearrange the house, and they made water and electricity, and they made four floors. Yeah, the neighbors. Uh, in the beginning, they had a much better contact, I think, with the squatters than we have now with the neighborhood. I mean, uh, this is a, an area that is really uh, an inside folk, inside people. So they have a whole own culture. And for instance, there's a pub on the other side of the house. And well, it's not nice to go there because they will look you out. And, and they never greet us. So we, we can say hello and they don't. We are still the squatters. <laughs> Monday evening we have uh, here a squatters consulting hour. Um, that means that people who want information about squatting or want to squat something can come here and uh, we give uh, all the information he or she wants. And if this person uh, finds something, uh, what he wants to squat, then we help him uh, from the beginning uh, till uh, the end. Uh, first, we uh, let the person go out, him or herself, and look around to see if there's uh, an empty house or an empty floor. And then in if they find something, um, they have to check that out further. And if they don't find something, we can give them some addresses that we think are empty. Um, then they have to go by there themselves a few times and see if there's light burning or ring the bell or whatever to see if it's empty. And then there's some I official places where you can get more information, like who the owner is, and if it's been reported empty and things like that. And if that's done and we're sure it's empty, uh, we organize the squad, so we get some people together, and then the actual squad will happen. Okay, we're gonna squat the uh, house. We're gonna go from the back side we're gonna go from the back side and uh, smash a little window then we go into the window we open the door the front door and then all the people come in and as soon as uh, all the people are inside we are trying to work we are changing the lock from the door and then we put our lock on it so that we have our own entrance that's because when the police come, the police have uh, have to consider that it's uh, that we have our own door, that we can open our own door, you know. And then, well, if we have our own entrance, then everything is all right. And then they cannot do anything in the beginning. They cannot evict us. <laughs> Squatting now, they're still being squatted in Amsterdam. Its, uh, it's apartments are being squatted around the center of town, in the poorer areas. 
There is no big houses there, there's just apartments, so people squat in apartments. Here in town, here in the center of town, there is no apartments, there's just big houses. And they are all being used. So the only things that are being squatted now is uh, really bad houses, old bad houses. And uh, I would say that is political squatting. Because if people would uh, like to live, they could squat an apartment perhaps outside. But these people, they want to live together. They want to organize themselves. And they want to fight uh, the change in the city center. Well, when we came here, it was just uh, the walls and uh, some floors. And we had to build it all over again. And uh, well, we squatted it because uh, yeah, we want to uh, show the people that uh, lots of people need a home here. It's about 60,000 people in Amsterdam who uh, want to live in Amsterdam, but they can't because there are no homes. There's no cheap, cheap homes. And uh, what happens here, it goes, it goes, uh, the rents go up by it. And uh, if you squat a building, the rents, uh, well, they don't go up, they, they stay the same or they go down. And, well, we want to uh, make uh, governments and, uh, yeah, big yuppies and uh, rich people clear that uh, it's, it's not, uh, yeah, you can't, uh, make money out of uh, people's uh, first need and that's a roof over their head and uh, well, that's one reason why, why I squat, I can't tell it by all, all the people but On uh, one concert <laughs> we were kind of drunk and then <laughs> and it was really good atmosphere and then uh, in the end we all changed of instrument like I pl I went to play the drums and Ernie went to play the bass. Did you? And Kirsten went to play guitar and Jan uh, was singing. more bands that uh, practice in the practice rooms, official studio, than with squads. We, p we only pay electricity. The atmosphere, the atmosphere is really good. Like the people working and stuff, it's really nice. Nicer than the city. is not illegal if the house is empty, it's not being used, if people uh, uh, are not seen breaking open the door, and if they really live there. And how can you prove that you really live there? To have a, a chair, a table and a bed. The, the name of this place is the Binnenpret. It's quartered in February 1984. On the day of chaos. Yeah. On the day of chaos. Yeah. 
And uh, it now uh, we have, um, um, let's start that side, there is a, a bar. Then we have a big place, it's called the hall. We do have concerts uh, over there. Then we have two ateliers. Um, we have a coffee shop. Uh, this place is the restaurant. Uh, over there is the sauna. Then we have a studio. Then there is a place for Moroccan people. And on the other side, there is a, a, a place for a few groups to make uh, theater. And then we have um, uh, once in uh, the two weeks, there is a big meeting for every, um, for every uh, space, you call it. And then all people come together and discuss about problems and new things and uh, about uh, organization of uh, the whole place. Strong philosoph. It's a term that I, I made myself for uh, explaining everything about dreams and, and, and uh, explaining the meanings of, of dreams. I think uh, the dream is very important for, uh, for uh, your evolution or for, for being really creative. So it's, it's, um, I'm very much inspired by dreams and, and, and the meanings of, 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 of dreams. So and, uh, that's in fact that I'm here in, in the squad movement or, 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 or into the alternative scene. It, uh, it also has meaning for me to, um, to, to change things in a more creative way. I, I notice very often things are, have uh, a heavy political pressure or, 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 or intention. I believe much more into creativity than, than politics. A squad is, is, is for me uh, something uh, that young people can uh, should use to, uh, to, to express their intentions, their, their, uh, their beliefs and, the, and their views on, on life. It's, it's not something to just get in and, and, uh, and, and keep it for yourself and say like, uh, aha, now I got a place, now I can sleep or something. You should really use it and, and, and do something good with it. We are here in the Wittigat, in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, we started to work here in this building for about six years ago. Uh, we had uh, two uh, aims in that. Uh, one was to work with alternative medicine, like what you see here with acupuncture and with homeopathy and so on. But the other part was to, to work with normal medicine for patients that don't want to go to a normal doctor or who cannot go to a normal doctor or hospital. In Amsterdam, is, there are a lot of uh, people uh, uh, afraid to go to a doctor. Uh, afraid because it's too, uh, uh, yeah, it, it costs you too much money. But also sometimes people are afraid for uh, the doctor because uh, you can come uh, in contact with the police in, in that way. And we are normal uh, doctors, uh, we are not uh, illegal working. The only strange thing is that we work, that we work uh, uh, for no money. Social media, they, they don't come, they're not interested, only when there is violence. Most of the time they don't give the background information why that uh, house had to be evicted or why it was squatted and what is wrong about the uh, about the that it that is that it has to be evicted and things like that and it's very difficult to uh, go to the official media and tell them what uh, what you want that they that they tell the people uh, who listen to the radio so uh, we have uh, also our own uh, media Uh, we are a uh, print tree, we exist now for five years and uh, well, we print everything that can be printed, so leaflets, posters, books, and uh, mainly we print for all sorts of um, political groups uh, here in Amsterdam. Uh, if you have uh, a radio communication, it is very simple, it's cheap, and it's fast. And Everybody can listen to it anywhere. I move towards the state of shock. Repeat 
The mast is the mast of uh, Radio 100. The antenna is up all the way up there. The higher the antenna, the better the radio. Yeah? Okay. This is Radio 100, a unique station here in Amsterdam. It's now uh, for six years in the air. It's a free radio station, which means we also have a free mind in the underground and in the squatters movement, um, things that are, um, how do you say, different, are supposed to be different, always are the same, you know? It, it, there's never anything new. And to shake everything up a bit, you have to uh, tickle them every once in a while, and that's what we try to do. Last year, Unfortunately, on May the 17th or the 15th, I don't know exactly anymore, but what the heck, the police came again with uh, special guards and so on, and they took the whole studio and our montage equipment and everything. Squad movement is in this sense important for, uh, for free media or especially free radio, uh, especially in, in the beginning, is that it gives a protection. If you, are, you b base your radio in a big squad, then you have uh, a big, uh, yeah, for the police it will be more uh, difficult to, to go to you. They are afraid. They think if they go to you, they will get the whole squad movement will be there in a few minutes and they will have big problems. When I started my program, Sister Evangelina, on religion, I did that also a little bit on purpose. I tried to uh, make the people listen to music that otherwise they would immediately turn off religious music just because the word Jesus or God is in it. I'm not a religious person, but uh, I wanted people to get over this, just to hear the music and to hear the true feelings that are in it. So you could say it's not political, but on the other hand it is, because you have to listen, uh, you have to step over your own prejudgments in order to listen to something. It was night, deep in the night, <laughs> and I came from the center of town with a little boat, and we entered in the restaurant, there was a big machine there at that time, and we filled our bags with stuff, like um, screwdrivers and uh, mater building materials, and since that time we were dreaming about squatting it. So two years after, when uh, a lot of squats were evicted, because of a big action of the government of Amsterdam. Um, we decided to, to squat the silo as a group of about 20 people who wanted to live here. Yeah, it was really easy. We went in and we welded all the, we closed all the windows. And the police came and they were really scared that there uh, would be some aggression from the, from the house because they didn't know what was happening inside. And then we played guard and uh, threw dice for a few weeks. And when the situation was a little bit safer, we started to clean. And then after eight months, when I think upstairs everything was cleaned and uh, the house in the middle was cleaned, then some people started to build their, their own spaces. <laughs> Very diverse, the people that are living here. You have some people who are very much uh, building people. They, uh, they work with metal or they work with wood or they work with engines or something like this. And it's, uh, well, it's very good for such a building because you need it. You have also people who, like we have one person who he bakes bread. 
for us twice a week, and uh, he has a he works also with uh, sound. He has a sound studio, and we have people who do theater work and uh, people who uh, do nothing. <laughs> we have a couple of them. I, I bake uh, this bread um, for uh, all the people in this building. And, uh, I built this oven maybe uh, two years ago, two and a half years. And, uh, I'm baking now bread for uh, one and a half year here, this building. And um, maybe each month um, there's coming two or three hundred guilders from this, uh, from this bread. But I'm uh, doing this with uh, two other people. And uh, so not all the money is for me. Why I do all this work? Uh, why are you doing all this work? I was uh, busy with uh, sculpting uh, already a long time before I started uh, performing. But uh, doing performance for me comes uh, out of uh, sculpting because uh, I experienced that many sculptors had their own uh, story with them. They started to tell in a way, they started telling stories, uh, pictures which I could see hard, nearly. So uh, from there on, uh, I used uh, sculptures in, uh, in performance. What kind of stories? I think uh, it's uh, psychology expressions of uh, things uh, you can't put so well in words or are unconscious maybe. It's also a fascination with, with uh, pictures you see. Uh. Mm. Well, all the time there's a lot of interest. Or a lot of people pass, pass, pass the place and say, hey, it's beautiful, you squat this. Can I live here also? Or can I take the space? And it's very difficult to choose because when you see a person for the first time, you don't know you don't know what person it is. You cannot you cannot judge on a, on a view. So what we did was we made big lists. Everyone who came, we said, okay, put yourself on the list, and we phone you. And then we looked to which people came back and what they did around, and if they wanted to work or not. And like this, we selected people. So the way we selected was really strange. Sometimes people came. It was a sunny day. We were drinking wine outside, and we had a meeting. And we said, oh yeah, of course, come and uh, start building, nice. And sometimes people came who were really interested and really wanted to work, but we had a bad mood and uh, it, was it was raining and something rotten happened. And then we said, no, no, it's no place. Well, we squatted the new silo, which is the building next door to the old silo, which we squatted three years ago. Um, we squatted it about a month ago. And um, it's because it's... Um, we know it's going to be pulled down in two years, yeah. but it's a very beautiful building. It's, um, it would be really great to um, have performances there and, and uh, places to work in. Um, but it's, um, it's very dirty and a lot, there was a lot of work to do. This village was going to be destroyed um, in, the, in the 60s already because the city of Amsterdam was going to make here industrial area. And um, so this whole village, about 400 people were living here, was going to be, the people were taken away, the houses were flattened and the people were brought to other cities. No? So then we, a group of artists from Amsterdam, we discovered that this almost deserted village and uh, we squatted it. We squatted first the church to make a big uh, uh, working space for people from Amsterdam and Haarlem and um, after that we decided to squat also the houses around so from that moment we live here. Now, 20 years later, this, this is 20 years ago, now they want to make a and uh, again, an in industrial area here, and they want to make a harbor here, you know, right here at the village. 
the village is going to be deserted again. Uh, people have to move out. And uh, well, we want to stop them again. And so, in the coming years, this is going to be very. Uh, now it looks very peaceful, but this is going to be a place where a crisis place really. We could change this into a into a disco. We could make a lot of money here. We have been offered many times all that money, you know. But we don't want any of that. We don't. We, don't, we want really what we, we want is peace and uh, a, a, sta a stable situation so that the nature can develop, and um, which is good for our for us and for our children. And uh, Balloon Company is uh, first of all, it's a group of friends. So we started off like friends uh, who uh, met each other in town in the cafe or wherever and. We made like plans to do uh, to do happenings in the in the in the end of the 60s and just do crazy things. And slowly, slowly, uh, in the beginning of the 70s, when we came and started living in this village, it became more like a group who regularly did things. So we started to be invited to festivals. We created our own festival. We uh, undertook long trips to India, to Morocco. And and uh, so there is a group of friends who sometimes it's a small group, sometimes a big group, and we do things together. Whatever good idea comes up, and people get enthusiastic about it, we start working on it. Everybody is part of the balloon company, except if you really uh, write a, a, a registered letter that you don't want to be part of it. So that's sort of the principle that this is not a specially closed uh, company of people it's just let's say an energy circle of people who want to do things I think in the beginning it, it was more uh, individual act and uh, and it was uh, and then I'm talking about the 60s so it was a thing to be done um, but you would do it mostly secretly, and it was not out in the open. I think it, it became a movement in 1975 for the first time, because then there was a neighborhood that should uh, be uh, cleared out of the, because the government wanted to make a metro station there, a metro line. And uh, people started to squat the, the entire neighborhood, and they said, no, we don't want these houses to be broken down, you know, we want to live here, and we want to fight uh, your plans for the metro. It was not about 1975, that was the first movement. Then, of course, as many people were doing that, there came kind of communal forms to organize daily life. As uh, uh, houses were often in a bad state and had to repair it, so money was put together, and so an organizational structure was created around uh, uh, a certain a lot of houses be, being uh, organized, being squatted. Then over the years, and then I'm talking about 70s and 80s, it changed when I'm talking about Amsterdam in such a way that you could say that the uh, working together of local uh, ori so-called original inhabitants with squatters became more and more rare. In the beginning of the 80s, then there was a very offensive, big movement. And if, well, there, are, there were then maybe 10,000 people for a demonstration after an eviction. It developed from a confrontation with a few policemen to confrontations with policemen, with special cars and helicopters. Afterward, we had uh, some main issues. For instance, uh, the, the building in, in front of the central station in Amsterdam. It was uh, more or less uh, called the castle because uh, they didn't uh, think the police was able to catch it. It was the first time we used a container, a, a big shipping container, 
with, uh, and we brought it in the, in, in, the, in the roof of the building. We needed uh, two, uh, two, two and a half uh, hours to go from, from the chimney to the, 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 the first floor. When I speak about the last year, we had one in the Centuurbaan in Amsterdam. This is uh, Centuurbaan 85. It was squatted the first time in 1980. And it's been evicted now for eight, ti eight times. The last time it was evicted in uh, March. It was empty uh, 30 years before it was squatted the first time. And the owner just wanted it empty, to stay empty. Now they're trying to build uh, very expensive uh, houses inside. That's what uh, they say they want to do. And the judge, they, he said that uh, it was the right from the owner to do what he wanted or she wanted. So now it's uh, not really much happening. And when it's empty again, we squat it again. In most cases, it, there, it isn't possible to go in, so with a special unit we go on the roof, we make a hole in it and we f from the top we go downstairs and in some cases we make some arrests. Then there are uh, possibilities that when we are trying to do so, other squatters at the, 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 the outside of the building try to, uh, to get the reaction by the police forces and when they do so we have special arresting teams and we try to arrest the people and bring them to our police station. That is, that is the, the way of tactic, tactic we handle this kind of problem. The first time this year they came with 200 uh, policemen and horses and uh, special police and we squatted it again the same day and a week after that it was evicted again with even more police. Uh, a lot of paint bombs being thrown at the police from uh, rooftops around here. And they arrested, uh, the second time they arrested the people inside, but they were re released after one day. The real problem with squatters was that they used violence. That was the real problem. But in, uh, as a uh, societal uh, uh, engaged group that say, well, you have to improve the urban dwellings, you have uh, to build new homes. It was a very good political movement, the squatter movement, but when you have a conflict, and the conflict um, uh, is uh, um, uh, decided by violence, then we say, well, it's never permitted. I say it's violence is uh, the fact that people don't have housing, that the people don't have care, that the people, that's violence, that's structural violence. And the, I see the occasional violence which comes out of the street being provoked by this situation being provoked by, um, by the police also. Uh, I see it more as a kind of a self-defense. But of course, it has been for the, for the city council, it has been a very grateful job to put this violence of, of the squatter movement and, uh, and put it into the media and say, people don't do this because they don't, uh, they don't listen to you. You know, those dirty squatters, they just uh, they're violent, and etc. It has been a very grateful job for them to use this. We gave the real solution in city, and also in cooperation with the government, that we said in Amsterdam, we want to build more. And in the end of the 70s, um, we built in Amsterdam, say it, about a thousand dwellings a year. But since 1980 till now, uh, we have built, on the average, each year, 5,000 dwellings. So, of course, uh, um, um, that um, took some of the tensions uh, away. I think the reality about social housing is uh, quite different. You see um, that, for instance, one simple fact. There used to be 50,000 people without a house here in Amsterdam in 1980. In 1992, now, despite of the social housing program, there are still 55,000 people without a house here in Amsterdam. So I think uh, and they also say it should stop now, because there is more want for expensive housing. So at the moment you see that they build for people with a job, 
They, they build for people uh, with jobs with regular income, with, for families, but they don't build for young people, they don't build for old people, they don't build for people without so much money. The problem is not, uh, not growing. Uh, also, the, 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 the climate uh, in Amsterdam has changed uh, enormously. Uh, we won the political struggle in the sense that we say, well, what you have to divide, honest, it's not um, um, uh, the power of uh, uh, the most strong person, and this, uh, the younger students, etc. We say, well, may you have to distribute on an honest way, and we won that struggle. And uh, the scorpers became uh, even more isolated, isolated, and now they accept uh, our um, uh, policy. Uh, the position of the government has always been to try and stop this, because they wanted to control everything uh, themselves. But, of course, they were uh, out of technical re tactical reasons. They tried not to smash it down completely from the first moment on. They saw that it was very strong, so they tried to have a policy of two lines, you know? One, to do concessions, and to, to, tr to give offers to people, to try to drag them out of the movement. And the other was a uh, violent, a violent way, a repressive way. So they were very good in, uh, in having this two-way tactics. I think it's uh, good uh, what the Kregers do. I think, uh, I think that uh, the ME, the, mob the mobile police, is uh, something uh, not good. I'm for the crackers. Okay. I think they are crazy. Why? Because they know the consequences of it, of the use of it. What they're doing is not wrong, but perhaps the way they're doing it is wrong. Sometimes. Sometimes they're too violent. But the things they're, they're doing it for, their reasons are not wrong, I think. A little bit old-fashioned, but still necessary in a way. Crackers, okay, if you need a home, you, you got to find a place, you don't gonna live on the street or something like that, you know? If I got to crack a house, I will do it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. After 20 years squatting in Holland and in Amsterdam, a lot of people know, know, now knows about what it is. And it is not only rioting or violence, but there is a background, there is a history, there is motivation, there is political motivation. I compare it for myself really to, to, maybe this is for you in Spain, this is strange, but I compare it in, to like the rise of fascism in, in, in Western Europe, in Holland. Before the war, you know, you had to take an attitude. What did, what was your point of view towards Hitler? Now, now I think it is the same. What is your point of view towards the environmental crisis? Where are you? My opinion about this uh, big, one big Europe will start on 1st January of 1993. Um, I think it will be uh, very uh, bad for normal people. I think it is a, a unification of multinationals, of big money, of uh, ego egoism. In the Netherlands, we are a very prosperous society, of course, and uh, when you have uh, um, some economic growth, um, each year uh, you will see that um, uh, the need of, 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 of getting more quadrat meter of living space will grow. So it's possible that in, uh, say it about uh, a few years' time from now on, uh, we have uh, again very great tensions, but I think that um, um, uh, a repetition of the Scorpio movement uh, will not uh, develop. It's going to be a very difficult uh, future because uh, we don't have a strategy anymore. First, you know, if you look uh, back, you can see first everybody believed in uh, communist uh, parties, communist organizations. Well, I, I say the communist uh, parties and organizations, they couldn't help people. Then you had the strategy of social movements, you know. If you build up a social movement on one theme, uh, you're gonna have, they're gonna have to listen to you. They're gonna have to change the society. But this strategy also didn't work. So now we have to look for a new strategy. I heard for, uh, for squatting uh, people when I came here in, in Amsterdam. Before I know nothing about that. But now I know a lot. And I learn also, 
I learn a lot because I, I've, ca I've come from a really different country. It was communism there, and it's different situation totally than here. And now Scrap Movement is against uh, capitalism, against uh, making money, against profit, against lots of bullshit in this world. Thank <laughs> you.